Hey everyone, it's Carly Hall and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to talk about sublimation on a mug. First things first, if you haven't checked out my sublimation video with a full tutorial on how to convert an inkjet printer, watch that one first and then this one will make a little bit more sense. For this tutorial, you will need a sublimation blank. This is not just a regular ceramic mug, it's coated for sublimation. So when you're looking to buy online, make sure it says compatible with sublimation. I will link these exact ones in the video description. Again, I'm using regular copy paper, so if you watched my first video, you know that I don't use sublimation paper, but I will have a full comparison, and this is just regular copy paper printed with my sublimation ink. So I will show you how to get this image into your computer and print it, and then you'll need a mug press. I'm using this mug press that I bought on Amazon. Again, I will link everything so you have it. Some other things that are optional are heat transfer mask and heat resistant tape, which I will show you later in the video. All right, let's get our image ready. For the image I'm using, you can find this image on my blog, but it's just a PNG. So this one is not an SVG that's used for cutting. You can see that it kind of has this watercolor effect and it's a PNG so you can print it out. There is an SVG version that you can use as well, but you won't get that cool textured look. So I'm going to delete these off so you can get a better idea of what we're gonna do. But my mug is about three and a half inches tall, so you can draw yourself a rectangle or some guides so that you can see just how big to make it. And if you haven't been watching my YouTube videos, then you may be surprised to see that I'm using Silhouette Studio, but even if you're a Cricut user, you can use Silhouette Studio as a design program. And you can even use the free version for this project. So I just drew a rectangle and resized it to three and a half inches tall, and I'm gonna ignore the width for now. Let me zoom out, and then we're gonna drag in the image from my blog. So you can go ahead and put that onto your Silhouette Studio mat, and then resize it to however big or small you want. Of course, you don't have to use this image. You can use any image you want for this project, and then you can resize it to fit onto the area that you wanna print. So I can make mine up to three and a half since I know that's how tall my mug is. Once you get it to be the size that you want, you can mirror your object since we are going to be printing it out. We need to mirror it when we apply it. And then if you want it on both sides of your mug, you can make a copy and align those so that it's all even when you go to print it. You can print it in one pass and um, make sure that it wraps around, or you can just print it out and cut them apart, which is what I think I'm going to do. So once you're ready, we're not gonna even use a cutting machine for this, so we can delete the cut lines, and then we will just print it out. So you can click print, and then make sure to hook up to your sublimation printer. It's very important that you're printing to a sublimation printer. Again, if you don't know how to convert your printer, then I will link you to this video here so that you can check it out. I adjust my media type to photo matte paper just so I can boost it all the way to best and then you will click print. Here's what the print looks like and don't be alarmed, it's going to look really light compared to what it's going to transfer as. So we're gonna cut it down, but first we're gonna turn on our heat press Again, I'm using a mug press and that's linked in my Amazon shop. And I'm gonna heat it up to 400 degrees. So we'll let that heat up and then we'll prep our image and our mug. To start, I'm just going to trim it down this image. Make sure that when you're cutting, you're not cutting the bottom of your image off and cut as closely to that image as you can. And if you want to cut it down this way as well, you can. Or if you want to see if it fits around and is in the right place, you can also just kind of wrap it around like this. So whatever you prefer, I think that looks good, so I'm just gonna wrap mine around. I'm gonna use heat resistant tape. This is special tape that can withstand high temperatures. And then I'm going to stick this in place, making sure that my image is all on my mug. You don't want it to overhang anywhere. And then you also don't want your tape to go over your image. So just make sure that it's not overlapping your image. And again, check to make sure that your letters aren't overhanging either. Then we're going to wrap it to the back. And if you don't like the way that it lines up and you want to shift it, you can either cut this down or shift it um, depending on how you like it. So I think actually I might need to cut that down. So I am going to just trim this edge off. 
and then I'll tape the other one on the other side. Once you have everything lined up how you like it, we're going to do one more step before we put it into our mug press. This stuff here is a old liner for heat transfer vinyl, but you can also buy heat transfer mask and it's exactly the same thing. So I'm just gonna cut down a piece to be three and a half inches long. The reason I'm wrapping this around is because I don't want my image to bleed through and get onto my mug press. So the, again, this is optional. You can also wrap it with a, another piece of paper. So completely optional. Once your heat transfer mask is on, you're going to open up your heat press and you'll wanna make sure before you start that your clamp is super tight around your mug. So let me grab another mug and show you. So using a mug at the same size, we're gonna slide this in and we just wanna make sure that it's super tight. So you can move this clamp and tighten it up. So we're just gonna tighten this so that when we close it, it has a ton of pressure. So this is hot right now. You may wanna do this before you heat it up. But again, just make sure that you have your clamp super tight because that will make a difference in your transfer. So now you can kind of see that there's a little bit more pressure when I close, and that's a little bit too tight. So you want enough pressure to where it's hard to close, but not too tight. So now that our mug press is ready to go, we have our design taped down and it has that heat transfer mask around it. We're gonna slide it in to the mug press. My mug press is set to 400 degrees for 180 seconds, so three minutes. And we're just gonna clamp that in and hit enter. And the timer will start and it'll count down. A mug press is super important for this process. I've seen a lot of people recommending using your home oven, and I personally do not recommend using your home oven because of the gas that's released. So with the sublimation, it turns into a gaseous state and then it fuses into the substrate. And so I just don't like the idea of having gases mixed around the oven that I cook with. When you heat the oven back up, it could come back in contact with your food. So I personally use a mug press, but you can also use a standalone convection oven to do mug pressing that you don't use um, for food. The other thing I wanted to say is that you cannot use an easy press for this process. So unfortunately, the easy press mini just doesn't allow you to heat up the surface as well as you'd like. I know some people are using heat guns, so there's a ton of options if you don't want to invest in a mug press. But for, but for me, the mug press made the most sense, so I decided to grab the mug press while it was on sale. Now that the timer has beeped, we can open this up. This will be super hot, so make sure that you have somewhere to put your project so that you're not putting it onto a surface that can be burned. And then you'll just let that cool down until it's safe enough to touch. One of the main reasons that you want to let it cool is because when you peel off the actual image, you don't want it to ghost. And so since it's still super hot, if you peel back the image and then drop the image back on, it may cause a ghosting effect. So do your best. Try to let it cool down before you remove that paper. All right, so once it's cool, you can peel off your transfer mask and you can see that it did bleed through. So if I didn't have this layer, it would go onto my heat press and then that could transfer onto another project. So I do like having that plastic layer. Again, completely optional, but I do think that you should have either a piece of paper or heat transfer mask to protect your mug press. And you can see that it is so much darker than the print and there is still some ink on there. So I wonder if you could even press it a little bit longer. So it might have gotten a little bit darker if I would have done a four minute test. So I'll have to try that out and get back to you. But overall, so clear, you can really see the watercolor effect, which is exactly what I wanted. So let's peel off the other side. And the other side looks perfect as well. So now I have a double-sided cup that I literally made in minutes and it's ready to go. Since the ink didn't transfer all the way, I wanted to try to do one for another minute to see what happens. So let's test that one out too. So here is the mug. I'm super impatient, it's still burning hot. But you can see that the coloring on this one, it's not drastically different. It looks a little bit darker. Let's do a side by side. So the one on the left is for four minutes. The one on the right is for three minutes. 
And you can see that the left one is a little bit darker, but not super noticeable. I actually think I prefer the right one because it kind of has more of the watercolor effect, but I just wanted to see if we could get some more of that ink to transfer. I think the real test will be the difference between these mugs and sublimation pr printer paper. So I'll have to try that out in our next video. So here is the final mug. This is completely permanent the second that it comes out of the mug press. So you don't need to seal it or coat it with anything. It is scratch proof, it's dishwasher safe, microwave safe, and is completely permanent. So you don't have to worry about it coming off your mug. This again is sublimation ink on a sublimation mug. And I also wanted to mention that the bottom is not coated. So don't try to add something to the bottom because that usually is not coated on sublimation blanks. I learned that the hard way, unfortunately. So hopefully you learned something in this tutorial or you found it helpful. And if you did, I would love if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel so you don't miss my future videos, especially because I will be doing more sublimation comparisons with the different paper types and blanks. So again, everything I used in today's video, all the products will be in the description below. So if you want to buy the mugs or the ink or the printer, everything will be listed in the description below. Thanks so much for tuning in and I will see you in the next video.